Let's get into it, y'all. Let's get into this transcript, man. Because it's about to get real good. So, where I left off is, was the cross by Leon on Jane, who is, y'all know the girl from the sex tape. Uh, excuse me. Let me go back a little bit so we can flow into where we left off. Okay, let's see. Oh, go back just one page. Okay. And you testified that Mr. Kelly went through great lengths to keep this sexual relationship relationship between the two of you a secret. Correct. And that meant lying to everyone around you. Correct. Because if anyone found out you were concerned they would threaten to ruin his life? Correct. And he was concerned. Yes. And they could, in fact, ruin his life with this information? Yes. And you also said yesterday you weren't there when Mr. Kelly called Milton Brown and told him to pick you up. Correct. So you don't know what Mr. Kelly told Milton Brown. No. You have no idea if he told Milton Brown why you were having that tattoo covered up. I don't. Okay. All you know is that Mr. Kelly needed to keep his secrets a secret. Correct. Okay. So... Let's talk about the drive to the tattoo parlor. But first, let's talk about some rules. Mr. Kelly has some rules for you, right? Yes. And this included even how you behaved when you were being driven somewhere. Yes. Okay. And these rules meant to control you? Yes. And controls employees? Correct. That was part of that was part of his way of hiding this secret. Yes. Of making sure that uh he could continue living his double life. Yes. Okay. The man who worked for Mr. Kelly, could they not speak to any of his guests or his artists? Yes. Yes, they could speak to them. Right. Oh, okay. They would be in trouble if they did. Yes. Even get fired. Yes. Not paid. Yes. Okay. Mr. Kelly would even get mad at you if you broke the rules, correct? So you followed his rules? Yes. Okay. So when you get in the car with Milton, you sit in the back seat? Correct. He was the chauffeur? Yes. Okay, even if there was only you in the car, you're sitting in the back seat? Yes. I think you said yesterday you had no conversation about the tattoo with Milton. Right. You had no conversation at all with Milton on the way there. No. Okay. And you had no conversation with him because you knew the rules? Correct. So when, now we're going to move on to when you get to the tattoo parlor, okay? Again, Mr. Kelly had already given you the directions on what was going to happen. Milton was going to drive you there and you were going to get the tattoo covered up. Yes. And for all y'all who's new and 
didn't catch the previous testimony, the 14 year old girl went when after the sex tape came out or the P tape came out, uh, her and her family went over to Mexico. When she went over to Mexico, she's saying that she snuck off and got a, a, a tattoo with his name on it, uh, on, on her, which now to me sound like somebody advised her to get the tattoo because it it helped more in the extortion tip of it, allegedly, in my mind. Who's letting a 14 year old girl daughter get a tattoo? And of somebody's name, even though she said, oh, she snuck off and she went off and did it by herself. You snuck off in Mexico. While you was with your parents, just you, your mother and father, y'all in Mexico. And you tell me at 14 in Mexico, you was able to sneak off and get a goddamn tattoo Get a a tattoo with the name Robert on you at 14. And I'm supposed to believe that? At 14? You went in Mexico. You wanted off in Mexico? Girl, you would have been selling your body parts. Like, come on. 14 years old? You would be working as a, a sex slave somewhere in, in trafficking you telling me at 14 years old you broke off from your parents on a trip to mexico and went and got a tattoo and we supposed to really believe that i want to curse so bad that s word we really supposed to believe that 14 14 Listen, y'all, I know I done heard some crazy stories in my life. But you're not going to tell me no 14-year-old first time in Mexico in their life wandered off to a tattoo parlor and got a tattoo without her parents at 14? Somebody boo boo the fool, but I tell you, it ain't me. It ain't me. Let me move on. So that's what's going on. If you need to catch up, that's what's going on. All right. So when now when we're going to move on to when you go to the tattoo parlor, okay. Again, Mr. Kelly had already given directions on what was going to happen. Milton was going to drive you there and you were going to get to the tattoo, get the tattoo covered up. Yes. So when you get to the tattoo parlor, it wasn't what you were expecting. It was a house. Yes. How are you leading her? You're testifying for her. Like, how, how is that even a question? So when you get to the tattoo parlor, it wasn't what you were expecting. It was a house. It sounded like she told you that. How the hell would you know what was she expecting when she got there and how it looked? Clearly, there's been some coaching going on here. Because how would you know? How would you know that information? I would have called an objection right there. Yes. Milton let you know you arrived at the address. I just need it. I just need a verbal answer. Yes. Okay. And you and Milton go into the house? Yes. And even though it looked like a home from the outside, when you get inside, it's actually been transformed into a tattoo parlor? Yes. This nigga is like, he's testifying for her. 
Like, how would you know this if she didn't tell you this once before? So you walk into the what looks like a living room area. Yes. And that area is kind of like a weigh-in area, right? Uh-huh. How is he, like, t testifying for her? Like, he's saying these questions, but he he's really letting the jury know, oh, she walked into a living room area, and it, it was like an area, uh, a weigh-in room area, because she done told him this story. And the question should have been, uh, so when you walked in, what did it look like? Oh, it was it looked like the living room area. Oh, okay. Was it a living room? Oh, no. It was actually a weight-in room area. But they done had this conversation, so you can tell he's coaching. So he's bringing the questions to just to get her to just say yes. And he's really testifying to the, the, to the jury her interactions at the tattoo parlor because they already interviewed her. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. A, 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 a slow person could see this. Okay. And they think, and they take you to a private area or something that has a little tattoo set up? Yes. It, question should have been, so where did they take you? Oh, they took me to this. You could tell that they already had this conversation. Where did they take you? Oh, they took me over to this little area where it was coming. But they don't trust their heart to remember everything. So they they flipping the, 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 the script and they doing the wording and just having her reply with yes and no to help they, their case to, to paint the picture for the jury because she's not going to paint it as, as good as them. I don't know how the, the defense is allowing them to do this, but they they get in the way with some very slick uh, tactics as far as painting a picture for the jury right here, in my opinion. Yes. Like any other tattoo shop? Correct. And it's like, and it's like Santa, uh, and it's like a sanitized location. People aren't just walking around freely. Correct. Okay. You said yesterday that you spoke to the tattoo artist. Yes. And you let them know the direction that Mr. Kelly had given you. Yes. You had a tattoo. You needed it covered up. Yes. Okay. And the artist did just that. And the artist did just that. He covered up the tattoo. I think you said he shaded it in. Yes. Okay. And when you're done, okay, and when you were done, you came out and you and Milton left. Yes. Okay. And yesterday you testified that Milton never talked to the tattoo artist. Correct. And you also said yesterday that you had no conversation with Milton on the drive back to, I believe it was the studio. Yes. Okay. I want to move on to the bags that you were talking about. Yes. Okay. So Millen not only drives you, but he drives a lot of people, right? Yes. Guests, artists, other celebrities, Mr. Kelly's friends. Yes. Is it fair to say that R. Kelly, the celebrity, is not carrying his own luggage in bags when he gets to his destinations? Sometimes, sometimes, but not all the time, right? Okay, he's got people to do that most of the time. Yes. Okay, Miller was not only the one who had the job of carrying Kelly's bags, right? Correct. Can you name some of the other people who had this job? Just other employees that were working for him. Other employees. Other employees like Tom Arnold? Yes. George Kelly, who I think his nickname is Junebug? Yes. Why are you telling her? Why is she at you not ask her to name the people? Like this dude is like testifying for her. Why, why they why is it like, well, can you tell me who, who are some of these employees? He's like, he's naming the people and she just, whatever. Uh, who I think his nickname is Junebug. 
Correct. Okay. And even more than that. And even more than that. Yes. Okay. And you never see any of these other employees, basically chauffeurs, go through our Kelly's or his celebrity guest bags, right? No. Okay. May I confer you, Anna? Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. <laughs>